All right. I did not create an agenda for this meeting specifically um, because I wanted it to be geared towards answering questions or discussing um, concerns that folks have going forward um, with the, the career change. So, um, I guess I'll open it up for questions. Um, I do want to talk about the sage green bags because that was something that was um, a little concerning to, to folks and I was a little bit um, taken aback <laughs> um, when I found out that Orbis Cascade was wanting us to use just brown bags or the uh, or the gray um, alliance bags. And of course the gray ones are only used for alliance members to send stuff to each other. And we're not an alliance member um, it, with the exception of EOU. So we haven't been using the gray bags anyway. Um, but um, we did get approval to use the sage green bags within the sage consortium and a lot of this had to do with the fact that they didn't have enough brown bags to cover what we would need in order to use the brown bags um, so i was able to demonstrate that by pulling some reports that we our demand for bags would be way way too high and I did I frankly asked them do you have enough brown bags to cover this um, because I pulled statistics for one week and and showed that if all of the items were put in green bags and a maximum of four per bag if multiples were going to the same destination that we were going to need around 1700 bags for just one week um, so I think that convinced them to um, change their policy, at least for this year. Um, next year, we may be using the brown bags, um, which is fine. We can adjust to that, but um, we weren't going to be ready for it for next week. So questions that anybody has? This is a very quiet group. <laughs> Has everyone gotten a chance to see the interface and, and feel comfortable with it? And Joyce, yes, if you have an excess amount of green bags, um, you can um, post that on the listserv, the CERC listserv, and I'm sure you'll get some volunteers to take them off your hand. And Barbara's asking about the labels for the participating libraries. Um, we have generic labels on the SAGE website and I'll send a link out um, as a reminder to folks. We can go ahead and use those labels for the participating libraries to get their um, stuff to the drop sites. Beth, do you know if um, on libraries that have pickups just two days a week, being that ours is Monday and Thursday in Lakeview, whether we will be getting anything on the 4th or we're just going to see what happens? Um, the 4th is actually a holiday. I mean, I mean the 5th, excuse me. Um, I, I doubt it. Um, I think that they will be there on Thursday for their regular stop so they probably won't pick up on the fifth either correct <sighs> yes yeah, so you have a lot of stuff <laughs> um, we have a lot of stuff and I'm not here on Thursdays <laughs> oh okay so yeah I have to train my person because she hasn't been she's been out and 
yeah. You can be generating labels um, while you're there on the 5th. Mm -hmm. And it'll still have the correct ship date um, since they aren't intending to come until Thursday. Um, okay. So at least you can, and and one of the things I'm going to stress to folks that, that there is a backlog of materials and um, just to process what you can um, because we're recognizing that this is, you know, it's going to take some time to catch up and not everything is going to be able to go out potentially on on the um, first day that you actually get pickups um, and deliveries. Um, one of the other things I wanted to stress was the fact that um, for, well, I think there's a couple things. I'm trying to figure out what to talk about first. The making sure that um, in the area where XPAC is, is going to pick up materials, that there's only um, the materials that are going out on the Orbis Cascade drop um, pickup. Um, make sure that you keep any local materials in, in another pile so that there's no confusion. And um, testing, we can only continue to test the system until um, through the 29th, so through Thursday this week, and then um, we have to wait until um, next week to actually create the labels that are going to be um, for real and live. Um, i trying to think. Um, look at my notes. Uh, the volume survey, um, Orvis Cascade wants the drop sites to fill out the survey. You should have all gotten that form from them. Um, since I'm not a drop site coordinator, I haven't seen the form, but um, you need to have an estimate of how many bags you think is going to um, be picked up by the expat driver. Um, the deadline for that filling out that survey is Friday at 10. So, um, Dia, I'm thinking about the the ESD. Um, and Adam, have you looked at the interface at all? Okay. Um, Adam, I'll work with you on uh, sending you the links. Um, BMCC, for those who aren't in the loop, um, which is probably most of you, the ES, the Intermountain ESD is not able to uh, produce the labels. Um, they are the main drop site. Um, BMCC is in the interim is going to produce those labels for us. And um, so eventually we we'll probably will have a second, um, we've requested a second drop site in the Pendleton area um, and that's BMCC and uh, they have offered to produce the labels um, and so we're working out a plan to sh um, get the ESD materials dropped off at um, at BMCC, BMCC will create the labels and then um, get them back to the ESD so they can be picked up by XPAC um, the following day. So we're still working out the details of that, um, but I'm, I'm happy we have at least a solution in place um, since the ESD um, doesn't have the staff to um, create the labels. Beth? Yes, dear. When you send that to Adam, could you CC me? And then we'll have that information as well, because I know during the breaks, our district will have to cover courier, and we may have to do those as well. So make sure that we 
we all are kind of in the loop on this. Oh, of course. Um, what do you mean by breaks? Like when BMCC is... Christmas uh, break and spring break. Okay. The district covers that, but I have a feeling we won't be able to depend upon BMCC because I think they're closed during spring break and Christmas break. So as part of our contract with the ESD, we cover those to keep the materials flowing. So um, anyway, just so that we kind of don't lose sight of that as we keep moving forward with all of our changes, that would be helpful. Yeah, no, I agree. And um, I'll send that out right after the meeting um, because uh, with the closing of the testing period, I want to make sure that Adam and whoever is going to um, help with creating those labels um, is familiar with the program um, before we start next week. Has anybody had any problems printing? Um, I tested the printing in Chrome um, based on the second webinar. I went in and changed the margins to minimum, and I didn't have any problems. Um, but I know that there had been some, some feedback that some folks were not seeing the entire label. So I just wanted to address that if uh, anybody was still having that problem. Any questions about, go ahead, Don. Just the first time that I, I printed labels, I did have that problem, but after, later I didn't. Oh, okay. Are you using Firefox or Chrome? Um, that computer is Chrome, but I've used my personal computer too, and on that I'm on Firefox, I think. Okay. Well, um, I think what I'll do is just quickly before we sign off, bring up the interface so um, folks can see it and maybe that'll generate some questions that you have. Um, so what I noticed that it does time somebody out and they may be making software changes too, so I don't, um, but it's supposed to stay logged in for an hour. And I haven't really tested that out. Um, and I think we'll be able to tell better when we're actually in live mode and they aren't working on the software. OK. So this is what the, the main screen looks like. Um, obviously has the home button. The or, Under the order tab, there is the create, track, delete, and reprint. Most of what we're going to be using is create, where we create the labels. Resources um, gives links out to forms that we're going to need in the future, and also a list of participating libraries. Um, which is good because they may you may not know when you get a request within the SAGE system um, if you've done ILL for a certain amount of time, um, you'll recognize the participating libraries. But if you happen to get a request from outside the system, um, this will be a link that you can go to to find out what drop site they're underneath. All right, in creating a, a label, let's just go through that process. It's already there. Um, I can select a drop site. And I've already created some labels and printed them. Um, Arlington Public. So once I select the drop site, I just click on the Add button. Um, if I have multiple labels to, to go to Arlington, I can change the count in here to whatever it is. Click on Add. And then if you scroll down, you'll see um, the drop site libraries are listed alphabetically. And the Arlington Public Library, here are the two labels that I asked it to generate. And over here, I can select a participating library if that is the case. If it's not going directly to Arlington, 
but it's going to one of their participating libraries like Gillum County Library, I select that, the screen will refresh um, and it shows that now the participating library is Gillum County. Now if I want the second Arlington label to go just to Arlington, I don't have to do anything further. Um, I just leave this box the way it is. Now you'll notice on the screen that under the printed column I have a bunch of yeses and I have a couple noes. Uh, that's because earlier I was testing the printing and I went ahead and printed them. Um, so I can select these and actually go up and print them now. Um, in addition, the select and deselect button is a toggle. So if I wanted, I had a huge number of these, I wouldn't have to select them individually. I could use the select deselect button um, to do that for me. When I click on print, it actually brings up um, what the display will look like. And I can print the labels at this point. Um, one of the important things to remember is that once I click on print, it assumes that I'm actually going to follow through and print the labels and it goes ahead and, and adds those labels to the shipping manifest at the expat end. So that's an important thing to remember is that if you have selected print, expat is going to be expecting to pick those things up. All right, so I don't need to um, generate any more paper, so I'll go ahead and click on complete. What the complete does is actually just takes you back to the order screen. And you can look and see that now those two Arlington labels, it says that I have printed them. All right, do we have any questions at this point? Okay. Yes, I have a question. I couldn't unmute myself. Um, when we're deleting items, yes, can we, de we delete them after we printed the labels? Correct. If we, if we found out we made a mistake? Yes. Um, so we just go back up to the top of the screen, which I'm having trouble finding. There we go. Um, so under order, there's a delete function. Um, what you do have to do is actually cut and paste. So I have to go back to my screen now. Um, you have to cut and paste the barcode. You could also type it in if you had them, say you had already printed it out and decided to combine bags so you don't need one of the labels. Um, you could type it in as well. Do you think you could scan it? Actually, they say that they don't scan. No. Oh. Yeah. So at this point, it's just a cut and paste or a typing of the barcode. Um, in the testing phase, they said that it may not show that it's deleted, but come live next week, it's supposed to work. Yeah. So if I click on delete, um, it will come up with a confirmation box asking if I'm sure. I click on OK. And it said successfully marked label as deleted. And uh, I can return back to the order screen, uh, show you this track function. So the track allows you to look at things that are outbound, your library to another library, or inbound, kind of like our transit report. So if I click, um, it automatically chooses from today's date through today's date. If I, um, it won't show anything until I actually click on search. I could also narrow down the drop site if I wanted, but I wanted to show you, um, ah, okay, let's try changing this to the 29th and see what it does then. 
Uh, so what is keying on there as far as the date goes is the, um, the ship date. Um, the items that we created today, we're in test mode. Um, the, the ESD is a five day per week site. So they get deliveries and pickups Monday through Friday. So it automatically assumes if we're creating labels today that the ship date is going to be tomorrow. And so that's when I, uh, why I needed to narrow down the date for um, tomorrow because that's the actual thing that it's keying on, that ship date. It also gives an approximate ETA over here, which is nice, um, showing when it is expected based upon their schedule to arrive at the other site. And in most cases, it's a two to three day window. Okay. Oh, reprint is, is used for there again, kind of like the delete. Um, if, if there was a label that somehow got destroyed, um, you have the ability to reprint it in order to get it in the bag. So pretty straightforward. Um, it's obviously a new interface that we haven't used um, before, but I, I think it works well. Claire, I noticed that you, you joined us. Are you still having printing issues or has that been resolved? Oh, okay. I was just reading your note, Claire. So, um, so how um, are these the link and WCCLS going to know what library it's supposed to go to? And Claire, are you using Chrome for your browser? Well, while we're waiting for Claire, anyone else have questions about the interface, concerns about how things are going to go next week? Okay, that's good to know, Claire. And, and yeah, the minimum setting on Chrome worked for me. Um, I didn't have any problems getting the whole label on the page. So I'm hoping that's the case for you. So with Link and WCCLS, it's stamped on the book. Um, so it's on the removable ILL label. All right, so they just look at the materials that way. Is that something they're planning on sending out to libraries? Um, do you know? Okay, well we'll just wait. Um, I think most of the libraries um, 
I say that a large percentage of our shipments going out are to other Sage libraries, so I don't know that very many of our drop sites are going to be impacted. But it's still good to know, um, and I'll make sure I wrote that down in my notes as well. Um, any questions about the volume survey that needs to be filled out by Friday at 10 a.m.? I haven't seen it. Um, the email I got yesterday afternoon, and I haven't had a chance to go through my email this morning, was that it would be out Thursday afternoon. Yeah, I think they're waiting until after the test period um, just to make sure that um, and, and I think also to allow folks to get a better estimate on what's going to be picked up. So um, one of the things I saw in the emails going out was that um, along with the bags that you already have, um, they want you to estimate how many um, you anticipate filling, and of course it's just a guess, um, prior to your pickup day. And so obviously they, they don't expect it to be completely accurate and they're going to be going based upon the, the manifest, but it does give them an idea of how to prep um, and make sure that they um, have enough tubs and a big enough vehicle to handle um, the volume. So it's important that those surveys get filled out. Um, and I guess um, as we go into the next week, if, if you have any questions that you think of after this webinar, um, feel free to call my cell phone or send me a quick email. Um, I'm going to try to be um, very available next week as we go through this change uh, so that we can address any hiccups that come up. So Beth, um, this is Dawn. Yes. Um, on, on our um, bins, we're using, um, well, we have postal service bins is what we have. Uh -huh. If we have extra ones left, so they're going to be giving us new bins? Yes, they are. Um, I don't know whether that will happen this week. Um, they, they talked about the possibility of dropping those um, bins. They're actually blue. They're the same shape as the USPS bins. They, um, some sites, they were going to drop those off when they make their dry run um, this week to make sure that they know where to come and um, iron out any logistical issues. Um, but if they don't drop them off this week, they will drop them off next week. Okay, and what are we supposed to do with our USPS bins that we still have remaining? <laughs> you know, Senvoy is supposed to pick those up. Um, if they don't, um, the fact that they're USPS bins, I'm, I'm thinking you could take them to the post office. Um, but um, I guess, let, well, let's see how this week goes. And if Senvoy doesn't pick them up, um, let me know. And I'll check with Orbis Cascade, make sure that we have the right procedure to handle um, from next and next week on. Yeah, I could probably call the, our former DASH person, apparently, um, since I have his cell phone number, because he's in Lakeview every day, and he could probably take them back. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know that Senvoy is going to, yeah. Technically, do they belong to Senvoy? Do they belong to the U.S. Postal Service? I know that Senvoy um, had a contract with them to, to be able to use them. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll get it straightened out one way or another. I was hoping that Senvoy would pick them all up this week. So I'm just put, supposed to be putting my bags in boxes and not bins, or? 
Um, you know, I probably um, just in case. Um, is Sunvoy coming again this week, Don? Um, there's they usually they usually do drop off some Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, I can leave a note with Terry. Yeah, see if they'll pick them up um, Thursday. But yeah, I would find another container unless uh, XPAC shows up with the the uh, the blue totes. We haven't seen anything. Okay. No uh, one's contacted us or anything. All we know is our current driver, who we love, hasn't been contacted. Oh, that is a shame, and we have no control over it. Um, you know, you get used to somebody and you hope that they're going to be picked up, but, you know, obviously the new vendor doesn't have all the connections and uh, would have just contacted couriers in the, courier drivers in the area. And unfortunately, he didn't select the one you guys had. No, and ours is a subcontractor out of Dash, so okay. he doesn't really know anything. Yeah. Okay. And Claire, you, uh, Claire, your question, uh, we'll be getting totes through our subcontract before July 6th. I'm hoping so. Um, my understanding was that they were going to drop off those um, blue totes um, as much as possible this week while they're making their dry run. But I don't know what days those are. Um, I don't know whether they'll coincide with the normal um, drop-off day um, or not. They're, they're still figuring all that out. Okay. I put napkins in there if I had them, but I just put a little bit of toilet paper on this one. All right, thank you. Okay. Well, I guess if there's no more questions, um, I will let everybody go. Um, I will send out um, an email to the listserv. Um, somebody had asked earlier about the labels for the participating libraries. So I want to make sure that um, we have links. Um, if there's any suggestion for changing those labels up, um, they'll kind of look like the Sunboy labels, which I thought maybe isn't a bad idea. Um, because they'll look different enough from the um, the barcoded labels that there won't be any confusion there. Um, so, and like I said, if you have any questions um, after we get off, um, feel free to call or email me. And glad that you guys could join us. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay.